hi, this is Mark from Right Line Trading. Uh, now I'm not projecting any slides. Um, David will be will, will be projecting his deck. Um, I just wanted to let you know that we're going to give it about another 60 seconds um, because a lot of traders are coming into the room. Um, and uh, wa wanted to let you know that we're here and um, and that we're going to be starting very very shortly. Okay, well, we're going to start, and uh, I really appreciate um, all of you for giving me your time. Uh, I'm really, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be introducing uh, David Weiss. Now, he this is this is really um, uh, a very very unique trader um, that we have developed an association with. Um, David has been trading professionally um, for over 12 years. And over those 12 years, he has really refined his trading methodology um, and uh, entry uh, trade management and exit strategies um, really to the point of, uh, I would say, um, almost perfection. Um, I, I mean, I've seen his trades and I've never seen anything like it. Now, um, we have a documented track record and this is just not, um, pie on the sky in his last 62 options trades he he has 58 winners now he's going to talk to you about you know all the specifics but i just really want you to know that um his track record is just is just something um that you know is is beyond is beyond belief now i just want you to cut him a little bit of slack because this is the first time that he's ever given a webinar in front of in front of a group of traders um he's really brand brand new to this um so um uh, he's never made a slide deck before uh, you know never created a presentation so it really gives me gr great pleasure to introduce david to you um and um uh give him the floor and let him tell you about his his trading method and how he just amasses this really amazing, um, this amazing track record. So let me have uh, Rory shift over to uh, David um, so he can project his slides.
myself. There we go. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate uh, appreciate the intro. And I uh, had to get my unmute myself so people could hear me. I appreciate everybody. I, I appreciate everybody coming to the uh, webinar here this afternoon. And um, I think that um, I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about my experiences trading to kind of build up to what um, what I want to talk about as far as the the options trading room that we're we're going to be doing through right line. Um, just kind of a little bit of a background. Uh, that's me, <laughs> and uh, where I uh, where I where I spend most of my uh, most of my days from probably about eight o'clock till about uh, six o'clock at night, st sitting behind my my monitors. And uh, as as Mark had said, I've been trading full time as a professional trader for about twelve years, mostly with options. I do use stocks and things, but mostly with options. Um, and you know, during the during the twelve years that I've I've been I've been trading, I've spent a really an enormous amount of time uh, looking at different indicators, uh, different trade setups, you know, candlesticks, performance candlesstick setups. Uh, there's there's so many of those of those things to uh, to use, and I'm sure if you're interested in trading, you've gotten all kinds of emails from people about you know the 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 next best thing, the greatest thing that's 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 ever happened. And most of them are um, the ones that I found that you know they they don't really work very well. Um, I did come across some some really good technical setups that I've been using for for years, and um, they served me well. Um, you know, I was able to make a, a good living trading off of these. Um, but what I've kind of found out in the last few years, the the effectiveness of the technical analysis that I've been using um, is not as good as it used to be. It, it, it keeps it's it's just deteriorated. My my win rate has gone down some. It was still high, but but I've I've noticed it had gone down. And I would find that identical technical setups that I would be trading from. It could be could be anything a bull flag breakout or or a breakout over a, a resistance line that they fail more frequently now than they ever used to, which is a big problem. I mean, it's a big problem. It increases your risk. You're 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 having a lot more losing trades than than you had in the past. So I kind of wanted to know um, why this was happening. Um, it seems to be getting worse, and I was I'm always looking for for improvements to, to try to become a better trader, find methods and, and strategies out there that are that are uh, would be an improvement for me. And most everything I saw was, was pretty much the same thing. Um, and I did, I came across uh, Mark Sachs uh, right line trading and a system he calls the compass trading system. And I was really intrigued by this. The reason I was really intrigued by this was it, it talks about um, Analyzing the institutional trades um, at, at on different times, different time scales, We're trying to identify if the institutions are are in a trade that you're that you're taking, and that's that's a, a really a big deal for um, for these trades because if you're in a trade and the institutions are are behind it, if they're if it's a bullish bullish trade and the institutions are are buying on that uh, on that particular trend. And they're driving it up. It's much more likely to continue and, um, and and not reverse. If you if you get into a trend that's being driven by retail traders and the institutions are not in there, then it's way less effective. It, it's just not. It can be it, it can be compromised very quickly. And what you find is a lot of times you'll get a a, a, a bullish a bullish move. Stock going up, you jump on it. Everything looks great. Looks like it's going to keep on going for you, and all of a sudden it'll it'll reverse on you, and you get trapped. And what I've found by looking at this compass system is, when I look at a trade to see if it's one that I want to take, I can determine whether it's whether the institutions are in there um, behind that trade. If they are, then I can take it. If they're not, I can bypass it. And this compass system basically. For me, this is it. What it does, it identifies the highest probability setups and sidestep setups that, that don't that look good but fail. And it's very important when you're trading, um, not just to have winning trades. It's very important 
to to miss as many losing trades as you can, no matter how good they look. And this this really does that very well. And I've not seen any other software that can do that for you. Um, basically, it, it it you know this is, does this by identifying when the two institutions are driving the move and when they're not. Um, and the really great thing about it, this, this is a kind of a, just a screenshot of what of the compass system, what it looks like. But the great part of this particular software is it's it's analyzing very complex trading data, um, crunching lots of numbers that we would individually would never be able to do. And it dis displays those results in an easily identifiable visual format on the screen. I mean, for even for a person who's not uh, an experienced trader, um, I can explain this, the system to them pretty quickly and they will be able to identify good setups and bad setups pretty quickly, much more quickly than they ever would, would be able to do by, by looking at uh, other uh, other uh, technical setups and everything if they're if they're trying to to do a technical technical trading which is uh what i am now um what we're trying to do is we're trying to get an overall edge over retail traders um remember we're we're never going to take any money from the institutions a any retail traders who think that they're going to beat the the institutional traders at their game are are going to be sorely disappointed um our, our money comes from other retail traders who are basically not trading in the right direction as, as the uh, not trading in the direction of the institutions. This is this is really what it's all about. You want to be on the institutions coattails when a trade is taking place. And that's where you're going to make your money. Where you're going to lose your money is if you're, if you're trying to, to, to counter trend against them. Um, gets in, it might look good for a candle or two, and then back they come into the trade and you're just, I mean, you're trapped in there. And that's that's what I've seen happen many times. And again, was looking for something that, that could help me identify those situations. So what what my my methodology is, and I'm going to talk about my methodology a little bit, how I'm going to use this in the trading room. Uh, I'll display some charts of some of the right line uh, trades that I've taken recently, uh, so that you can see kind of like what the setups are, what I'm looking for, um, and if you're if you're in the room with us, I'll have that the, those charts uh, up on the screen every day, and I'll be just you know changing symbols, and you'll be able to see, and I can talk about exactly what I'm looking for on each trade to make it a, a good trade or a trade that I'm going to bypass. But again, we're this is what our edge is, and and anybody who's a trader, retail trader, you have to have some sort of an edge uh, over the rest of the retail traders in the market if you're going to be consistently profitable. And consistently profitable is the key. I mean, every every trader has has some, can show you some big wins. The 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 key is are they consistently winning week after week, month after month? That that's the important thing because if you're going to trade and you want to um, actually make a living at it or or generate at least an income from it that you can, they can use to uh, to help with your lifestyle, it needs to be consistent. You know, you can't be making um, you know a thousand dollars a one week and then losing four thousand dollars the next week. That's just uh, you know you're going to be you're going to be out pretty quick. So our edges is, is we're we're only taking trades that are being driven by institutions. That's a very key thing, and that's what the that's what the compass system will will identify for us. We're going to be trading stocks that have relative strength or weakness versus like the SPY or the QZ indexes. Um, and when I talk about relative strength, I'm not talking about RSI, if, if anybody knows, is familiar with what RSI is, we're not talking about relative strength index. What we're talking about is taking a stock that is outperforming the SPY or the QQQ um, that on that five minute chart or on that daily chart. We, we, we wanna be in a stock that's doing better than the, than the SPY, for example. So if the SPY is going up 1%, you're in a stock that's going up 2%. If the, the, sty, the SPY hesitates and, and reverses, you're not going to get hurt as bad by any kind of a pullback in a stock that has relative strength. So I'm I'm always taking stocks that have relative strength or relative weakness versus a spy and are also uh, being driven by the institutions. And the third thing to give you the, the best edge is that you're going to be trading in the direction of the overall market trend for whatever time frame you're trading. Um, if you're trading a five minute chart, 
you you want to be looking at the overall market trend for on a five minute chart. You want to be comparing your spy on the five minute chart to uh, what what your stock is doing. So these three these three elements give us a a really high probability of having a trade to be successful for us. And I, and I typically only take trades that have all of these all three of these elements in them at the time that I enter it. You know some of the things can change, but at the time that I enter it. Um, so again, our trades are going to be supported by institutional buying and selling. The stocks are going to be outperforming the indexes, and they're going to be moving in the direction of the overall market. So you're really trading with a with a the wind at your back for for all of the trades that I'll be entering. And you can understand with looking for trades that that have all all three of these elements, there's not going to be massive amounts of trades. Um, I don't put on 10, I don't put on 15, 20 trades a day like some people do. I'm very selective. I typically wait for the, for the first 15 or 20 minutes uh, for the, the market to be open to, to judge what the market is, is likely to be doing. I, I want to see what the, what the trend is. And I also want to see what stocks are performing well um, to get my relative strength. And then I'll be looking at the, the, the compass charts to see uh, which stocks are, are, uh, are the best the best uh, setups on that particular uh, on that on that software. So again, this is these are the three things that give us an edge, and it's re it's really important to have an edge in trading. I, I can't I, you know I can't emphasize enough. But, you know, the, the, Mark was talking about the the option trades that I've done this month, and again the 62 trades. Uh, you know, I track every single one of them. Um, I, I use a program called Trade Review, so I can I can actually analyze all of the. The, uh, the trades that I'm taking, if, if, so I can identify any weak spots. Um, and uh, you know, 50, uh, 58. I have 58 out of, out of 62 wins, 58 wins, and, and four losses out of those 62 trades. The, those kind of percentages, you, you're not going to get them in, unless you've, unless every trade that you take has the maximum number of, of elements in your favor. You, you, you've got to have those. You've got to have those elements to to make this work. Um, and so that's what I do. So that's that's kind of the the methodology I use. I mean, it sounds really simple, um, but there's actually quite a lot that goes 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 into this. Um, and these are some of the trades I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some of these. Uh, let me see if I can project some of these on this on the screen. Bear with me just a second. I got them here in my presentation folder. Okay, here we go. All right, so all right, so this is this is a trade. Uh, this is this is Abbott Drugs right here. Uh, this is a trade that I took um, actually on twelve seventeen um, as a, as a, as a swing trade, um, and this this. If you're not familiar with the Compass software, this this is why this is so easy. Uh, green is green is bullish, red is bearish. <laughs> so you you're looking for you're looking for as much green as you can. And when we won't go over the the software today, but you can see how how visual this is, and and how for a trader, you all of this complex information is being presented to you in in such a uh, an easily a simplified visual manner that it makes it so easy. To uh, to trade off of this, so you know this at this app of trade, I, I get in um, on these little green dots are called trend dots. What you're looking for is to enter when the price is as close to that as possible. All the, it's all green lined up, the stock moves up, and I exit it over here. And I think that that was I took like an 11 11 percent uh, gain on that on that particular stock. Um, but I, I want you I want you to see what I'm looking for inside the, the compass system to uh, to find these stocks and, and basically how, how how easy it is. All right, so we'll move on to another one. All right, so here is a, this is a bearish one. This is Citigroup. This is Citigroup that I, this is a swing trade as well. And I, just to kind of emphasize, most of my trades that I take are inter intraday trades. I'm going to close them out 
uh, at the end of the day, before the end of the day, you know, right? sometimes it's a half an hour, sometimes it's two hours, sometimes it's three hours. It depends on how long it takes to get to my profit target. But if I'm, if if I take a, a, a trade and the daily chart is also is is also bullish or bearish, it lines up with the five minute, then there's no problem taking those as swing trades, and I and I, and I do take those as swing trades. Um, I also will sometimes take a trade that's really set up really nicely at the end of the day, around 3:30, 3:45, uh, and take that and basically just hold it overnight, anticipating um, you know a pop or a gap up or a gap down in the morning to uh, to take take profits and the advantage of that is that if if you can't do a day trading if you're if you don't have the a $25,000 account so you can't be a, a pattern day trader those kind of those kind of trades will give you the ability to um, to take the advantage of the of the of the software and uh, and the trades that I take and and not be uh, not, not get a, a, a not be stopped from trading by the by the brokerage house because you don't have uh, you don't have the, the amount of money that you need in the account. So that that's it. I just I just kind of wanted to cover that. Um, Citigroup, this was a 12.9 short swing, and I get into this in 12.9. And again, you, it, it, this is all going to look very familiar. Here, here's Citigroup moving sideways. This is a compression. It's stocks, everything's red. You can see, I mean, you can see red across the board. Here it comes across here, and you can see right here it gets very close to these red dots. So this this is where I ended it, and then down it went here. And this little drop right here doesn't look like a doesn't look like a big deal. It was over a 19% winner because we're using options. Uh, options are are a really a, a good leveraged instrument if you if you uh, get in because you're not paying for the price of the stock. You know, in a in a case like Citigroup, um, I think the 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 option cost me it, it was like. Two dollars and sixty-four cents for the option. Um, it's two hundred sixty-four dollars a contract, and I and I get out at uh, three dollars and fifteen cents. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's nineteen percent return. That that that's a that's a big return on uh, on that. So this is again. So this is a this is a Citigroup chat, and these are these were these were swing trades. And this is this was another one. This was Charter. This was a this was a really good one. Uh, charter was a was a day trade. Um, I got in at twelve twenty three. So th on day this was I was in uh, in the morning and and out in the afternoon. And this trade here, it started right here early in the morning, um, and was out here on this on this on this move right up here. This this pink dotted line up here is is what is a pivot point or basically a, a resistance level. And so when the stock get up to that, that that's where I took profits. And that charter trade was 52% uh, 52% return on my option in in just these six or seven candles. Um, and that's that's what options do, that's what options do for you. I mean, it was a four dollar move in the stock, um, but you know, it's six hundred dollar stock. How many shares can you buy? It's not you know, it's not really practical. Yeah, let's see, what else do we have here? This was a this is a, a, probably a favorite. This is Microsoft. Everybody trades Microsoft. Um, again, this was this was one that I got in. Um, it was about a 10% return. I get in in the morning, right here. Get out right here, and you can see that it's it's everything is green. Uh, blue is also uh, tradable, by the way, on, on the colors just for just for your edification on that. Um, and went up, hit the pivot point, get out. A nice, nice gain, 10% gain, um, in a, in about a half an hour. So I was happy with that. Generally, when I get into a trade, just to understand my methodology, when I get into a trade, I, I pretty much have a um, a profit target in mind if it's going to be an intraday trade. And I usually will put an order in once the trade gets filled. I'll put an order in to uh, to take profits at that level, um, so I don't have to be watching it all the time. And and also a lot of times. When stocks spike, like if you see this little spike in the in the price right here with this little uh, with this little wick on the top, when a when a stock price uh, when an option goes up like that, when a stock price pops up like that, the the volatility of the option will increase and uh, and the option will pop pop in, in value briefly. And if you've got an order in to to take advantage of that, you'll uh, you'll get filled and you'll you know you'll be out at a profit. You'll 
you, you, you look back and say, oh, I'm, I'm out, I've got my money, I'm happy. <laughs> and that, so that's what it's all about. So I, you know, I have, I have several of these slides. I don't want to go through too many because it, um, you know, it'll, it'll, it can get re redundant. But I, what I wanted you to see was the, the pattern that I'm trading, what I'm looking for. Again, all of these trades that I took had relative strength against the market when I get into them. I was trading in the direction of the market that day, and I was trading with the with the uh, the compass system. Um, I was trading with the, with the compass system. So hold on a second. Let me. I gotta change my change my slide here. Where's my Microsoft? Oh, here it is. Gotta pull it over. Sorry about that. I had left my charter slide up. So here's the here's the Microsoft trade. And again, here's the here's my entry. Again, sideways movement. Compression. Pop right here. The green dots are above, everything's green. Write it up and out right here at the pivot point. Um, and again, 10% on that. So that that those are only really, you know 45 minute trades or something like that. So they're 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 fairly long trades. So that kind of gives you an idea of the um, of, of basically what I'm uh, what my methodology is and, and what I'm looking for. And what I what I'd like to do in the room, a couple of things. Obviously, I I want to be able to um, help the people that are in there trading and, and give them trades that they can they can make some money on. Um, you know, whether they're trading one contract or ten contracts, whatever that whatever happens to be. But uh, but by showing the the uh, Compass, compass software, uh, the compass chart. When I have that up during the day, um, I can I can help the traders understand how to use the software, um, how to find the good trades, um, and how to bypass the bad trades. Um, and what I'm going to do, what my plan is, is to basically call out the trades in audio, and then um, Put them in in text later so anybody who comes back they can see the trades that have been taken and while i'm most of the time during the day uh, I'm, I'm not going to be issuing trades i'm going to be looking at stocks i mean i i have to spend almost um, all day basically going through um, scans that i run and chart charts to find the ones that are what what i want to trade many times i'll say okay i i, I like microsoft this morning um but i'm going to wait for a pullback i'll let you know we're ready to get in so you could be you can be ready to be able to trade that when, when the, if the time is right. Um, but in the meantime, as I bring the charts up and, and show the, the, uh, the, the compass system um, in the room, I'll, I can discuss the, the stocks that I'm bringing up there, why I think it would be a tradable stock, why I think it's not a tradable stock, why I think it would be a good swing trade stock or not a good swing trade stock. So I'm hoping that that, that will be, besides making money, it will be a way to uh, to help with with educating um, uh, the traders that are in there who who uh, want to learn how to trade this effectively. All right, so I'm just looking to see if I have any questions. I don't I don't really have an awful lot more to say about this. I mean this this I think that the you know my track record is really good. I'm I'm I think that that. Uh, I can help people who would, who would like to make some money, <laughs> uh, which is what we why we all trade stocks. I mean, that's that's the reason for doing it. Um, we we're it's very important for us to uh, to make some money. I mean, you, you trading is there's a lot about confidence. You know, you, you really need to have confidence trading. And it's a, it, the fact that you can get a high win rate. Um, you know, if you have a 75, 80 percent win rate, you'll be confident about the trades that you take. If you're running a 50 percent win rate, you won't be. Um, and there's that that's that's really important. So I'm hoping I can help folks besides make money, also make them better traders. I mean, that's that's what I uh, what I what I would really like to do. Um, you know, I've, I've I've not done a room before. I I do mentor people, but I've not done a room before, and it's you know it's going to be a learning experience for everybody. But I I think I the the what I can bring here is is going to be extremely helpful to anybody who who would like to uh, would like to participate in this. And let's see. I'm trying to find out if I have any questions here. Hmm. 
Man Cave. Uh, it says, for those who have never traded options, can they join your group and learn the system? And it, of course, the answer to that is absolutely. That's one of the things I want to be doing is is is, is teaching that. Um, We don't see any other questions at the moment, unless I'm missing them. And as somebody asked, I was sending out a recording, I believe Mark said we would be. And tell us how you find those trades on the daily chart for swing trades. Well, it's 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 um, not tremendously complex. So the the difference between uh, a swing trade and a and an intraday trade is the uh, the time frame on the chart that you look at. Uh, this is like this is Procter and Gamble. This is a, this says D. It's a daily. I'm going to be looking at this the um, the, the compass system on a daily on a daily time frame. And using the the criteria off the compass chart on the daily time frame to determine whether it would be taken as a swing trade. If it's an intraday trade, I'm going to be looking at the five minute chart. Now, if I if I get into an intraday trade with a five minute chart, and the daily chart is also bullish and set up with with all green the way I want it to be, then that trade can be you know if, if I want to I can stay in that trade and and take a little bit more risk because I can hold it overnight or for two or three days if I want to and uh, and and just treat it as a swing trade. But but a swing trade is is dependent upon the what the daily chart looks like. That that's what you're going to be uh, that's what you're going to be keying off of uh, for for uh, a swing trade. It's got to be got to be based on the daily. Okay, I don't. I may not be the best at doing this. I can't with finding these questions. I think I, I don't see any other questions out there at the moment. Hey, David, are you able to see the questions? Um, yeah, I've, I've just a sheet that I answered, but I don't, I don't see a lot of them here. Let's see. You want me to read you a few of them? Yeah, if you've got some there, sure. I, yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble um, finding them. Dean asked for the 58 of 62. What was the average reward risk ratio of wins? And um, of, yeah, the risk to reward ratio. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'd have to go actually go back and do the calculations. Uh, but but my 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 average on the on the on the losses, the four losses, I think I had the average loss on those was was roughly about about 35 percent. Um, but there's only four of them. Uh, I tend to give the trades a little bit of room when they when they set up strongly. So I'll give them some some room. So sometimes the losses on those will be, you know, more than more than five or ten percent, but the but the but the the win ratio, the the percentage gains on the winners that I have, um, I typically run on, on some, somewhere between the low end of about ten and, and and up to about thirty. I mean, I'll get some that are fifty or sixty or seventy, but but generally it's between ten and thirty percent um, is what is what the win is. Um, you know, I don't I don't try to do like a one for one or a, or, a, or a two for one or a three for one. You know. Win three, lose one, um, lose three. Win three dollars, win uh, win three dollars, lose one dollar. I don't, I don't do that. I'm, I'm basically looking at the technicals of the, of the, of the stock and making a determination of how long I want to stay in it, um, uh, based on that. And, um, you know, you get what you get. I mean, you know, you, the, the profits you take are going to be based on what the, what the stock will give you. 
uh, Jack asked you. He Jack wrote a question, a statement, and a question. He said, "You mm -hmm. you possess incredible skills. I trade using a self-directed Roth. The IRS mm -hmm. has Roth rules that have broken, destroyed the Roth. Would mm -hmm. you be calling out trades that are Roth inappropriate?" Uh, generally, I mean, with, if as far as you know, you have to check with your broker, of course. But you know, I, I trade in a Roth all the time, um, and I have the ability to trade puts and calls, straight puts and calls, and I also have the ability to trade spreads uh, in my Roth account. Um, I wouldn't be, you know, you're not going to be doing uh, naked puts and naked calls in a in, in the Roth account. I wouldn't be doing that. But you would have to check with your broker to to, to find out what what they will allow you to do. But none of the trades I take are, are going to be um, contrary to any kind of IRS rules on Roth. Okay, thank you. Denny Denny asked, how big are the losses? Was December a normal month for your win rate? Um, you know, the, December was the first month that I that I used the compass system uh, along with my with my um, normal technical setups. And my my win rate was was higher um, in December than than the other months. But I think a lot of that is is because of the compass systems. I think the biggest the biggest difference was I didn't trade as many I didn't take as many trades because I was I was bypassing some trades that I, in in past months I would have taken because of the the technical setups looked fine. But the compass systems basically kept me out of those trades. So my win rate was 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 really high. You know, well I keep a 93 93 percent win rate is 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 really pretty 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 high. But I mean that's quite a few trades to do it over and. And the market was pretty choppy in December. I mean, it, it's been a bull market for years. So, you know, long is the, is the way you go most of the time. But it, the, other than that, it's pretty consistent with what I do every month. Okay, thank you. Kong asks, how long will a typical trade last? Well, it's in, on an intraday trade, like I said, it, it depends on how long it takes for, for stock to get to my, my price target. I would say, the average the average intraday trade that I'm in probably lasts about somewhere between two and three hours. Um, sometimes they'll last five or six hours, and there's some that will they'll they'll be over in a half an hour, but not an awful lot. Most of them will will go on for uh, for a period of time. The um, I mean because you know the market chops around during the day, so you get a you get a stock that'll pop up, but it won't get to your target. Then it'll pull back. And then you have to wait for it for it to uh, recover and get back up again. So, but I would I would say most of my intraday trades are are over in in three hours, four hours or so. Okay, thank you. Maurice asks, uh, what are the hours of the trading room? When, um, how long will you be in the trading room for? Well, I'll, the the market opens at nine thirty, so I'll be there at nine thirty. I'm probably I usually in there about nine o'clock. Um, I'll be popping up some charts to take a look at. Uh, uh, some of the stocks that I've that I've looked at from overnight that that may be potential um, trades for the day and see what they're doing. But the market opens at 9:30. I'm generally not going to take my first trade until the market's been open 20 minutes or so, 20 minutes to a half an hour, unless something extraordinary pops up. Because you know you've you, you've there's a lot of times you'll get a a real big pop in the market in the morning, or you'll get a big drop in the market in the morning, um, and then it'll retrace. And you don't want to you don't want to get into those kind of trades too early. The, the one thing I don't trade is I don't trade um, really fast momentum stocks. If you get a stock that jumps up 10 points, I typically don't jump on something like that because the, the price is going to be too far away from any kind of support level that I'm, I would be looking to um, that I'd be looking to use. So basically on those kind of trades, I just wait. I, as I've showed you on the charts, I'm waiting for this thing for a stock to compress and then trying to find my best my best entry point from there. But most of the, the first trades, I think the, the small I didn't take very many trades today because the market was pretty bad, but I think my first trade was around 10, 15 or something. And then I'll, I'll, I'll trade when the, when there's a good trade available, you know, it's, I take what the, what the market's going to give me. Um, some days I'll have six or seven really good trades. Some days I'll only have three, but the, the point is, you know, I don't take trades just to take trades. I trade, I take trades that I, I feel have the highest probability of success. Understood. Richard asks, David, do those arrows appear automatically on the chart? How do you see the institutional volume coming in? Sorry if you've answered that already. Okay, the, the, and I think the arrows he's talking about are those pink arrows that I that I that he saw up there. Um, that's actually something that that um, that a friend of mine put on on my toss chat, which we can which we can put on 
on the, the compass chart if people wanted it what it, it what it identifies is um, we call it a break out of the box it's basically a compression multiple multiple candlesticks moving sideways that then then pop up and it, it pops an arrow in there just so you can see you can just see it visually um, and, and it helps visually I think Mark Mark Sachs on on one of his uh, webinars he talked about the compass system was talking about that particular setup as, as being the, the highest probability setup that you can get, which is when you get a stock price moving sideways into these little green trend dots, which is tell you that the, the stock is, uh, has, has got good momentum, and then it pops and you get a green candle off of that, that that's, where we, that's where we put that arrow in there. It's basically um, uh, an indication that you're breaking out of compression, moving to the upside, and um, I, when you when you see those, I, I try to take my, a lot of my entries based on that, as long as everything else is is aligned. Thank you, Arthur. Ass in your prior experiences, were you making intraday trades as same as the ones described here? Well, I was making intraday trades the same as described here, except they didn't work as well. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I I did I did fine. Like I said, as I said at the beginning of the of the of the webinar. The thing that I was looking for is why would why would the, the trades that work so well for years beginning to fail more and more? You know, um, the same exact setup would, used to work like four out of five times. Now it's working, you know, three out of five, two out of five. And I was trying to find some sort of, of reason for that occurring, which is what led me to, to, to right line. I mean, when I listened to Mark Sachs talk about the indicators that he had he had produced in here um, and what what made them up you know as far as the institutional buying and selling off of off of the um, you know the the, the Laguerre oscillator and the, the quant lines that they've got I mean this is all this is all mathematical uh, it's done mathematically the numbers are crunched and then you produce these these uh, these lines that you can you can visualize and you can trade off of but yeah I mean I've, I've this has been a way I've traded I mean I've obviously modified my trading over years to try to make it better and better. Um, but there was an element missing now. And the element was being able to identify as best as possible that the where the institutions were uh, on a trade, were, were they in it or were they not in it? Um, and, you know, nothing's 100%. I mean, you, you can't identify every market force that's out there by, uh, by any software. You can try to do it. And you want to get as close as possible, but this is, to me, this this is really a game changer for technical traders um, to be able to uh, get the best high probability trades, but also avoid the ones that would be likely to fail because of the fact that the institutions aren't in there buying. Okay, Brian asks that is, Brian states that he's really excited about this new development. He asks if you're mostly buying calls. Or do you ever need to do um, iron condors or spreads or other types of configurations? Well, I, I tell you, the, the I uh, personally I do I do spreads I do debit spreads and I do uh, credit spreads. Um, I never do iron condors. I'm what's considered a directional trader. I I need to I, I have a direction that I'm expecting the stock to go based on my technical setups. So an iron condor is, is basically a non-directional trade. You're, you're trying to you're trying to basically go a couple of standard deviations above and below the price and 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 do your spreads up up there and down there. But but I I do I do debit spreads and I've actually found debit spreads to be fairly effective. But initially I'm not going to be calling those out in the room until I feel the the folks who are in the room um, understand how the how those work. Because I mean a lot of people may may not know. Uh, uh, a debit spread, a good way to do a debit spread. So I don't want to. I want to try to keep it simple initially, so everybody can just be on the on the on the same uh, on the on the same route. But I but I'm I'm be more than happy to to do debit spreads and credit spreads and um, if traders want those. I I do them all the time. Okay, George asks. Uh, we're going to get back to that one, George. We'll backtrack and and follow up with the uh, the cost of the off the service. We're going to. Um, go over the the cost of the room in just a few minutes. Gene uh, Gene is asking if this is for stocks and options. Yes, this is for a, an options trading room. Right for options. I mean, any stocks that I call out, if people are in the room, if they want to trade stocks, it, it, it's they can they can trade stocks. I mean, it's 
it, it doesn't really make any difference to me. But for, to maximize your, your return on investment, to, re, to maximize your, your profits, uh, options are, are leveraged. They're, they're a leveraged instrument that's, that are going to give you the, the best bang for your bucks. Like that, that trade I showed in Charter, you know, the stock goes up four dollars and, and it's nine hundred dollars stock. You know, <laughs> that's a pretty small return. Meanwhile, I'm making fifty two percent on 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 one option. So it's 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 this is geared for people who want to trade options. Thanks. Uh, Greg asks that he states he has an IRA, an IRA account and he's limited to the swing trades. Um, mm -hmm. His question is. How many swing trades? I, I imagine he's referring to trades held overnight. Do you right. usually do per day or week? Well, typically, I can't say that I do one every day, but I mean, I would say that the number of swing trades that I that I did in December, that stocks that I held overnight were, were probably about of the 62. I'd say it was probably 15 or 20. You know, something I'd have to go back and look. You know, 10 to 20, I would say. And and one of the things that I I talked briefly about was in order to get around that 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 particular situation, which is you, you're not a, you can't be a pattern day trader, so you have to hold stocks at least overnight. Is um, I, I look for good setups late in the day, you know, three three o'clock, three thirty, um, that look like really high probability trades, and and take them overnight. And looking for a gap in the morning to get a to get a pop in the stock and take profits, that that gets you out of the 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 trap of being on a, on a, in a day trade, so it doesn't count as a day trade against you, and yet you're still making profits. You're really only in the trade for like from 3:30 to 4, and then from maybe from maybe from 9:30 to 10. Okay, great. Um, another question from Ray. Um, he asks. He states that his his workspace does not look like exactly like yours. Is there a script for your setup? Uh, let me let me say one thing about that, Ray, and then um, you can answer his question as well. Um, David uh, is making his workspace available, and if anybody wanted to have the exact same workspace that he's projecting, that will be available. Um, so you can always contact us at the office. Did you want to add something to that? No, I mean that's 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 fine. I mean the um, Listen, any kind of trading system is a, is a work in progress. I've I've got this setup that what that I think is really good right now. The, I'll, I'll be happy to to include those those um those break out of the box arrows that we've got that you know that can be included in the in the study set that goes into into Think or Swim, and it can look exactly like mine. I mean, it's I got this I got this from right from right line. So <laughs> uh, Terry asks, can you review? Can you please review the procedure for announcing a trade in the room? Yeah, and this is again, this is I'm, this is going to be something I'm working on as we go along. But this is what my plan is, um, and you know, a lot of it's dependent upon when I when I find a stock. If I find a stock that looks like it's one I'm going to want to trade, and, and maybe it's it's pulled up a little bit, it's it's up a little too much, or extended, I'll wait for it to pull back. I'll I'll make a note that I'm I'm watching that trade right now. I'm watching that stock. Um, then when I'm going to when I enter a trade, I'm going to say, okay, we're going to buy. We're going to buy, you know, um, J J January 7th, uh, 150 Microsoft uh, calls, um, and we're going to pay, you know, whatever the whatever the price for those calls happen to be, and then I'll, I'll announce that. Then I'll go in and, and enter the trade, and if I can't get filled, I'll make a note that we, we we might have to adjust the price up to get filled or whatever. But I'll I'll do a play by play of the of the trade as I'm taking it, and then I'll once I'm in the trade, if I decide that I want to put a, a sell target on. I'll say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna enter a sell order for the Microsoft January 7th uh, options, and we're gonna put a price in there, you know, maybe a dollar more than what we paid for the for the uh, for the options, and that trade will be out there and active. And if we have to adjust it based on the the activity of the market the, the rest of the day, we'll do that. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Asked gener generally speaking, what is your tar target profit target percentage for swing trades? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's really it's it's hard to say. The, the the target for either an intraday trade or a swing trade, the targets are are based on technicals of the chart. Um, if if I'm in a swing trade and let's say I've got um, this, I've got an eight percent, eight or ten percent move 
to the 200 day moving average or some sort of resistance level on the, on the daily chart, then that's typically where I'm going to set my, uh, my target somewhere around the resistance, because, you know, one of the rules of thumb that I use, and when I train, teach people, this is one thing I ask them to write down is you buy at support, sell at resistance, buy at support, sell at resistance. You're getting in as close to support as possible. So you're, your 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 pr probable losses or your potential losses are small, and you sell at resistance because you're at a point where there's likely the the stock is likely to to hesitate and maybe turn back. So where I where I set my price target is going to be is going to be dependent upon what the technicals look like. But you know I'm I'm generally looking on 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 swing trades, you know for somewhere between 20 and 50 percent. You know I will take multiple contracts. And I'll I'll scale out of a of a trade, uh, so that's how we. Should. Okay, great. Um, Bry asks, or Bree asks, what size of an account do you recommend? Well, I mean, if you got a, if you're going to day trade, um, then I, I think you you should you should have not twenty five thousand, you should have like thirty thousand dollars in a, in a day trading account in an account if you're going to day trade. If you're just going to swing trade. You know, five thousand is probably plenty. Okay, thank you. Um, do you have a profit target per day? No, I don't set profit targets per day. I, I find that they're counterproductive. Um, I found that if, if you're if you're saying, okay, I want to make five hundred dollars a day, and, and you know, don't get me wrong, if I, if I'm up a thousand dollars a day, I'm I'm probably going to cut back on on any trading I'm doing because I, it's it's a, it was a good goal. But I don't do that because what it it what it does sometimes is it makes you take trades that you shouldn't be taking to try to get to your goal. Uh, you got to take what the market gives you. So I'm much more interested in a weekly, you know, a weekly goal or a monthly goal than I am a day goal. Cause I, I think it, I think it can, it can make you take trades that you shouldn't be taking. And David, Tim asks, how many trades do you average per week? Per week? Um, well, we had, we, between December 2nd and December 28th, we had 62 trades. So uh, that's, that's about 20 days, about probably three to four, three to four trades, maybe five trades a day. Perfect. Mike asks, uh, well, I think he answered that, Mike, about the spreads. Uh, the trading room hours, I think he answered that one. Anytime the market's open. I mean, it, it, listen, there's going to be dead time in the world. We're just looking at them. I'm not going to be talking all day, but I will be talking about the charts that come up and, and what I'm looking for. I, I would like to be able to, um, you know, help educate people as, as far as what, what's, uh, what, what's a good trade and what's a bad trade. You know, of all the trading rooms I've been in, I've been in an awful lot of them when I was, I was learning how to do this. Um, and my main goal when I did any of that was to, was to learn to become a better trader so I could become independent at some point. And, you know, that's what I wish for everybody. Okay, great. Um, Arthur asks, repeat if haven't seen, uh, in, your prior ex ex in your prior experiences, were you making intraday trades as same as the ones described here? Yeah, and, and I think we talked about that, but yeah, yeah I mean, the, the, we did. The, when you say the same, I didn't have the, I didn't have the Compass software to use. So the, what, I was, what I was using um, didn't include what the institutions were doing, which makes a big difference as to which particular trades you're doing. Like I said, this is really, for me, this is a game changing, a game changing piece of software because it, it, you know, I, I take what, what technical setups that I'm used to using relative strength, relative weakness, all of that. And I add this as a filter for those trades. And unless it, unless it lines up on the, on the compass system, um, hundred percent the way I want, I'm not in the trade. Uh, the next question from George, um, I, I think I can answer this one. He asks if he has to subscribe to the Compass to join your sessions, and the answer is no. No, uh, they don't have the software. Right. It's totally independent. You could trade off of any platform. However, if you do want to, um, if you do want David's workspace, it is available. Yeah, um, I mean, if, if you want to, if you want to learn using this at some point in time, you decide you want to, you know be able to take your own trades or, you know, pick some other trades and what I'm doing, or, you know, just, just become a, a, a good trader. Um, at some point in time, you're probably going to want to have the software. How do you determine relative strength and market direction? Do you have a scanner? 
Well, I, 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 have, I have multiple scanners, but um, I use a, a thing called TC2000 right now for scanners, but we will have a nice scanner for the uh for the compass system that we, we we can put right on the toss system but the way i the way i judge relative strength and relative weakness is on my on one of the charts that i use i have the um the spy the spy i have basically that the movement of the spy overlaid my on my stock chart so i can see uh, when the stock when the spy pulls down like this afternoon the spy had a big drop i can look and see what my uh what my stock is doing um, versus the spy, and it's 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 very easy to, to visually see relative strength, relative weakness when you're comparing your stock to the uh, to the to the spy. That that's how I that's how I do that. And the market, I mean, you know, if you look look at the market, it's 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 if you look at the charts, you can you can see if it's a bullish day or a bearish day. I mean, all you have to do is see what the what the spy is doing, and all those things are not are not static. Uh, relative strength and relative weakness can come into a stock and go out of a stock during the day. You know, think about the institutions when they're when they're coming into a stock. They, you know, all of a sudden they're, they're in buying the stock, giving the stock a lot of relative strength, and then they, they back off for a while and the relative strength goes away and then they come back in. But I found that stocks that have relative strength and relative weakness versus the, versus the, like the SPY are much more likely to be, to have institutional um, involvement at, at that time that they, they're actually, uh, one of the main sources that drive relative strength. And you may have answered this one, David. Um, Len asks, are your option trades calls and puts for newbie option traders? Yeah, sure. That's okay. the whole point. <laughs> um, okay. The whole point is if you, if you, um, if you come in and you're in, what I'm trying to do is, is get folks who just want to make a few dollars and you know, make some money off of options. Don't really know it. Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing. I mean, I tell you which which put a call to take. I mean, you have to you have to know how to put an option trade on your platform. I I can't press the mouse for you, but I can tell you I can tell you what what stock to take, what expiration to take, and what price to pay. Thank you, David. Um, David asks, what type of chart is this? Is this a web-based chart chart or a download? He's asking about the chart that you're projecting. Yeah, the, well, the, this the projected chart. That's a that's a thinker that's thinkorswim, which is which is not which is not a web-based chart. This is a I download. This, I actually have thinkorswim uh, software running on my machine. I personally don't like web-based stuff um, for these kind of things. It's you know. Terry asks um, how the room will be set up, and that's going to be in GoToWebinar, similar to the webinar we're in now. Yeah, I mean that's 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 what because it, it's it, it makes it easy for me to to do audio. Um, the the one thing I'm, I'm will we'll work with this is where I can where I can actually post the trades that I've taken. You know, if I'm announcing that I'm taking Microsoft as a trade, I'd like to be able to put that in in text somewhere so that any somebody who comes in maybe you know half an hour later can see the trades I've taken. Terry asks, "What is your stop loss?" Uh, what is my stop loss? My stop loss is is when the when the stock breaks down below um, what I consider a support level. I don't. I, I, I use mental stops. I don't use any hard stops. Never have used hard stops. I mean, listen, we're, we're talking about institutional trading here. The institutions have access to massive amounts of data out there. If you put a hard stop on on a stock, believe me, if 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 they want to, that they can see the all of, all the hard stops that are at a certain level, and they if they can drive it down through there, take the stops out, and then bounce back. So I just I do if I'm if I'm in a trade, and I and I and I feel like if the stock gets below a certain level, I'm going to exit. What I'll do is I'll put an a I'll put a an alert on my chart that'll alert me when the stock gets below that price, and then I'll then I'll take action at that point. Okay, great. And Arthur's asking if you could please show him the Tesla trade. The Tesla trade. All right. Let's see. Let's see. I have Tesla here somewhere. Tesla here. I had a t couple of Tesla trades. I don't remember which one this was. But all right, this was Tesla. I have some notes on some of these things because I have I had to jot down some trades because I had so many. It would be I'd go crazy trying to find them all. But this was. This was 12.23 and 12.22. So this this here's a, this is a Tesla trade, and I do remember taking this Tesla trade. Um, 
Tesla is a, now Tesla is a, for options trading, I, I do trade tra Tesla and I trade Amazon and some of the others, but you have to keep in mind that the, the cost of an option for something like Tesla can be, can be really pretty pricey. Um, of note, when I take an option trade, I'm buying an in the money call or an in the money put. I'm not buying any out of the money calls and out of the money puts. I don't recommend those at all. Um, you want to, you want to have some what's called intrinsic value in your option when you buy an option. So I would, you know, I would, uh, in, and it's like when it's Tesla's here, let's say it's trading at 913, I'm probably buying uh, somewhere around an, an 890 or an 885 call on something like that. But this is, this is a Tesla trade. And, and these arrows here are the things that I told you that were the pop out of the box arrows. If you see the price moving sideways and you right into these trend dots and I get this, this pop out of the box arrow. This is like a, a beautiful high probability entry. Everything is green. This is green. You jump in here and I actually did take this trade and I think I got out here. I don't think I waited for this wick, but that stock went from 9.22 to this is something around 9.35 or something like that. So it's a, it's a huge trade in, in Tesla. Um, but you know, you can see how it flattened out right here. And you see, you see how the as the dots get further and further away from your 15, it 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 tends to re revert to the mean at some point. So you don't want to be you don't want to be taking Tesla way up here. You want to be taking it down here. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, Philip asks, uh, what what are your purple and white line percentage EMA percentage? Um, or maybe he's just asking, what are your purple and white lines and EMAs? But, these things here you're talking about I, the purple line these these oh the, the the purple line that i've got on here is is uh is that that's a um that's a vwap line of, of volume weighted average price um and that's that's something that if you're trading long you want to be trading when the price is over the vwap and when you're trading short you want it below the vwap the, the this green line right here this thin green line is uh, this is a 15 EMA of an EMA. It's basically a smooth EMA. Again, these are proprietary lines that right that right line has. These are the ones that that Mark and Sergio have produced. This is a 50, the 50 EMA of an EMA, and this goes to what Mark calls market structure, which means if you if you're trading long, you want 15, 15 green, you want the 50 green, and you want the 15 above the 50. And uh, the purple dots right here are pivot points, or basically resistance levels. And Marilyn asks, hey, Marilyn, when does your service start? On January 3rd. Start the new year off on the right foot. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe asks, how do you calculate your profit target with a fast-moving option? Well, you know, in, in something like Tesla, um, if, if I get into Tesla, you know, like typically in this one, I do remember, I paid like $1,800, $18 a contract. And I just immediately put an order in at $22 a contract, $4. Because I've, I've traded Tesla. I mean, I'm really familiar with Tesla, right? I trade it all the time. And I, I know based on the, the stock movement that somewhere between two and four and $5 is, is, a, is, a good, is a good profit and I'll get out. And a lot of times you stayed into the end of the day, you know, you could have made $20. The problem is you've, you've got to, You've got to sit through the pullbacks, and those pullbacks, um, if, if you're watching your P&L, can be can be pretty disconcerting um, because it moves so fast. So typically, I'll just put an order in for you know two to four dollars higher than the option, and if it pops like that, boom, you're out. You know, I, I don't, I'm not trying to catch the top. I'm not trying to get out at the top or get in at the bottom. You're you're never going to be able to do that. You want to just basically take the meat of the trade. You know, if if you buy one contract and you get an 1800. And you get out at 22. You made $400 in in 10 minutes. Um, I'm I'm perfectly satisfied with that. I don't I don't look in the rearview mirror at my uh, at, at my old trades and say, oh, I should have stayed in this trade. I, I don't do that. Okay. Um, a lot of these you've answered. Let me keep going. Some of them are redundant, so I'm going to skip over a few. Okay, sure. Uh, one is kind of a personal question. Bree asks, how many contracts do you normally trade? Well, I mean, it depends on the price of the option. Um, 
and it, it, there's a as far as as far as the size of of, of the that you're going to take obviously it depends on your account size there's other things that go into that in the, like the market this week is really really slow the volume is really slow this is the kind of trading environment you want to basically keep your your, your your trade size down fairly small you don't want to be taking excessive risks in low volume markets so it depends on the, the price of the option it depends on your account size and it depends on uh, what the market's doing um, that day but typically I'll, I'll try to take a you know a, a, a flat amount so if if um let's let's say for example I'm I'm putting two thousand dollars into a trade, and uh, the the options are four dollars I'll I'll take five <laughs> contracts. If they're if they're ten dollars I'll take two contracts. So my the the amount of the amount that I'm risking on each trade is the same. Now when the market market's really strong and I've got I've got a, a really high confidence in the uh, in a particular stock then uh, or in the market that day then I'll I'll ramp up my overall risk. On a trade, but but they'll all, the risk will be a, will be approximately the same on each trade that I take. Thank you. And a lot of them are about the offer that we're about to go over. Mm -hmm. um, it is being recorded, Accenture. George, we answered that question about uh, you don't need to have you don't need to own the Compass system to participate in the live trading room. Nope. All you have to do is be able to listen to me. <laughs> Tim asks, "What is your minimum dollar stock price you look for?" Um, you know, I I would say I, I usually keep a ten dollars of ten dollars or above. I don't trade stocks, especially in this kind of a service. I'm not going to trade stocks that are that are under five dollars. I mean, you might as well buy the stock as buy an option. So most of the stocks I'm trading are going to be over ten. I would say that uh, the, you know the the uh, they're anywhere probably generally between twenty dollars and and you know I already go, go all the way up to Amazon in those, but probably be between twenty and 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 a hundred dollars would be the normal uh, price of the stocks that I generally trade. It's a it's a listen. I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at hundreds of stocks every day through the scanners. So it just depends on which ones meet meet our the criteria that I want to buy. Those are the ones I look at. Okay, great. Cash, um, I think David mentioned that he's using Thinkorswim. That's that's TOS that you see. Yeah, that's uh, a, that's a TOS platform. That's where Compass that's where that's where the Compass software goes. Uh, Dean asks, approximately how long? <clears throat> hours, days, or months would it take to learn and get proficient with the program with your methodology and go solo? Well, I'll tell you, before, before the Compass software, I would have said for somebody who, who wants to learn to become an uh, independent trader on their own and be consistently profitable, it's, it's going to take a minimum of two years. Um, I think with, this, with the Compass system, it changes all of that because even though you still need to know how to read other technicals and everything, this is going to really speed up the process because of the fact that you're going to be bypassing so many bad trades that you want to get in otherwise. So, uh, you know, I would say, you know, in, in something like this, you know, probably, you know, probably six months to a year. And, and I, I'm, I'm guessing here. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been doing this for such a long time, but I do know that when I saw it, and I and I saw how how I could trade off of this thing. I'm saying, you know, look at the, look at this. I mean, I can I can find a trade here in in 10 seconds that that used to take me uh, 10 minutes. Okay. And Kai asks if you do butterfly or directional butterfly. I, I do trade butterflies. Uh, sometimes it's not something I'm gonna I'm not I'm gonna uh, basically if you've got a directional trade, uh, I've used that. You know, I've used those strategies. You know, I mean, I, I use I use diagonals, um, I use time spreads. You know, I, I do a lot of that stuff, but but those are not that's not going to be the the bread and butter of the room. I'm happy to work with anybody on who wants to do those kind of kind of trades because I do them I do them myself. But for somebody who's fairly new, just learning options to try to do complex option strategies, you know, butterflies, condors, um, you know, broken wing butterflies, all that kind of stuff. It, you don't want to be messing around with that stuff. You want to keep it simple. 
Okay, great. Um, Arthur asks, do you offer a text alert or do I need to stay in the room all day? Um, well, Arthur, that is something that we are considering doing. So um, we do have a text sending service that we can definitely implement for this for this service. So yeah, and um, I think that it, that probably would be very effective for for swing type trades, uh, where where time is is not so critical. Yes. So the answer to that, Arthur, is going to be yes. We we will be sending out text alerts. Uh, we're going to be starting on January third, Terry. And David, you mentioned that you started at nine thirty. What is the end time? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. When the market closes, uh, you know, I'm listen. Unless I'm taking an overnight trade, I'm probably not going to take any intraday trades um, after after three, uh, because I I if I need unless it's unless it can turn into a swing trade because I I need more I need if there's a pullback in the market I need time for the stock to recover and that doesn't give me that much time so most of the intraday trades the the last ones for the for the day that are going to close out that day will generally be be four three o'clock. But, John I'll, asked, but I'll still be looking for overnight, so. Sorry about that. Hmm? Um, John asked, do you ever trade expiration week options? Yeah, I, I, I do. Um, on my debit spreads, I use them all the time. Generally speaking, if I'm, if I'm in an intraday trade and it's Monday, sometimes Tuesday, I'll take Friday expiration. Anything later than that, I'm going to at least go out another week. And generally, I'm going to go out, I'm generally going to go out more than that. Um, you know, there's a there's a thing in, in options called time decay, which means the closer to the expiration date you are, the faster the, the, the premium comes out of those options, they become worth less and less. So a lot of times, even if I'm going to intraday trade um, a, uh, a stock or an option, I might go out two or three weeks and, and, and still sell it today. Now, it's going to cost me a little bit more, but. I'm going to be I'm going to be mitigating any kind of a pullback in the stock price. I'm going to I'm going to protect my my option value much better doing that. Thank you. Arthur asks, uh, David, do you trade in the money or at the money or approximately how far out of the money calls when entering? I never trade out of the money anything. <laughs> I'm okay. always in the money. My calls are in the money. I I. I I usually shoot for about between a 65 and a 70 delta, something like that. If if they know what delta is, you an in the money call or an in the money put is giving you what's called intrinsic value. If you buy an out, let's say the stock is trading at $50 and you buy a $52 call, so the stock's got to go up $2 to even get there. That means the entire premium that you just paid for that option is made up of nothing but time decay and volatility, which you've got nothing built in there that's worth anything. So if the stock pulls back, there's nothing to, to, to hold any of that premium value up. Whereas if, if the stock was trading at, at 50, I would likely be buying a $45 call, you know, relatively in, in the money, somewhat in the money. Okay, and part two of his question is, how does David scale out of a multi-contract trade or does he just ride to the target? Well, it, you know, again, it depends on the price action. If if I'm in a if I'm in let's say I've got five contracts and like in this particular trade here at Tesla let's say I had, I only had one but let's say I had five contracts and the stock does this okay it shoots up here like this and then I get this big spike and then a pullback I'm out of the entire trade when that happens but if I was if I was scaling out let's say I, I sold one of the contracts here and I then I held some more and I I maybe sell a couple more here and then bail out at the end it depends it's all depends on your price action and where your resistance is. Um, you know, a, a lot of this is, is it, it's not black and white. This is, this is really dependent on, on price action and, and, uh, support and resistance levels and, and your, and, and basically your goals. Um, there's nothing wrong with, with getting in four contracts and getting out four contracts and, and taking a dollar or $2 on each contract and, and moving on to the next trade. Um, you know, if, if you, if you're going to, if you think you're going to maximize every single call by staying staying in and uh, trying to get out at the very top, you're going to end up, basically you're going to end up uh, uh, chasing, you know, ch chasing nickels and losing dollars. It's not, it's not a good process. And David, David is asking, uh, you may have answered it, it might be redundant, but he's asking your stop methodology. Well, there's a couple of things that in, in this particular, 
with, with, with this compass software, one of the stop methodologies you can use is if you get in when the price is very close to the 15 or very close to the, these trend dots, you can ride the trend. You can basically, if the stock was riding the trend dots up, you could, you could ride right up with those, with those trend dots. Um, when the stock pulls away high from the trend dots though, you probably want to be taking profits. So in this case, I would be taking profits just because the, the, the price is very extended. But let's say Tesla rode right along this, this, this line. I would stay in it until these dots turned yellow, just like that. that that's where, where an exit would be. And it makes it pretty easy to, to, to trade like that. Okay. And, for, and for when I'm in a trade and, I, and it runs up against some sort of a resistance level, um, you know, then, then that, that, that also obviously would be a stop. I'll, I'll, I'll either scale out or get out when it runs into a resistance level. If it breaks through the resistance level and, and takes off again, then I'll just re-enter the trade. And George asks, if, if he does not have $25,000 in his account, mm -hmm. um, will, would it still be worthwhile to be in your room? Well, you know, of course I'm going to say yes, but because I'm, I'm going to be putting out swing trades, and swing trades is is, is what you what you want to uh, trade if you if you have less than a twenty five thousand dollar account. And you know, the, I can't say I'll have a trend a swing trade every day, but if you're in a swing trade, if if I give you two in a week or three in a week, then you're in good shape. And again, I am going to be specifically looking for stocks that are set up after about three thirty in the afternoon that could be entered. For people who, who who don't have enough money to trade uh, intraday, they can take that and just plan on holding it overnight and getting out the next day or two days later. Um, even though even though it may not be a, the the perfect swing trade, if you get a nice pop in it, it becomes it, it's it's not a day trade as far as the as far as the, the exchange is concerned. It's it's a swing trade even though you get in it at a quarter of four. Okay, last couple of questions. Kevin asks, when buying a call or put option. How much time decay and what delta do you select? And I and I, I use a delta of around 70. And I and I, I buy and in the money around 70 and generally uh, at least out a week or two from from when I'm planning on exiting the trade. Uh, swing trades, I'll, you know, swing trades I'll go out a month, but I'm I may only hold it four days, but I'm 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 giving myself some time if I if I need to have it. Okay. But always always in the money, always in the money. Uh, Terry asked me to send him a video of the compass, and I will do that, Terry. Um, do you trade the SPY or Qs with this software? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. If if the SPYs or the Qs um, come up on the uh, as um, you know as as you can't you don't have obviously you don't have relative strength relative weakness in the Qs of the SPY. But if I've got a, like a bullish a bullish day on the spy, and I see the I see the spy on the on the compass system, and I see it setting up like this, then I'll just buy spy calls. Sure, I I do that all the time, all the time, and and it's it's great because there's no liquidity issues. You can buy as many as you want, um, and usually you can get in and out pretty quickly. There's there's no there's no big spread on them. Uh, yeah, no, I absolutely trade the spies and the queues. And Alan asks, if you day trade options, still need uh, to do in the money options, same day out, out of the trade, there is no time decay. Do you out of money option trade? No. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, listen, out of, out of money options trades, I mean, listen, I've, I've been doing this a long time. I, 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 I know, the, I know the, the attraction of the out of money calls. Oh boy, I can get into this. I can get into this option. It's only going to cost me 25 cents, and this thing could go to ten dollars. I, I understand the the attraction of those. The problem is, the facts is that out of the money options are a losing trade. Over the over the long term, they're a losing trade. Most of them are going to go to zero. You you just they just it's just not a good way to trade. And I can I can tell you from from how much I've lost trying to do it in the past. Okay, and the last question is, Victor asks, how do you trade options with very high IV, IV greater than 20, 200%? Yeah, um, 
you know, it's th th that's a that's a, a tough question because I'm looking at the price action, okay, and and he, you know he's right. IV can if you get in a stock that's moving fast. Typically, if if you've got an IV that's that high, it's not a stock I'm going to be in be, because of the fact that the IV um, is going to have the stock is going to have jumped. If I was looking at a, a stock with a 200 IV on a five minute chart, it's going to be like a, a straight a straight candlestick right up multiple candlesticks shooting way up it's going to be way out of range for something that i would take um so what i'm trying to be is is in a stock that when it does get a pop like with tesla popped right here that's increasing the iv and i'm going to take advantage of it because my option is going to go up in price but i'm not going to chase um stocks that have big ivs like that okay last question uh david george asks how many day trades can he take per week without breaking the day trading rule three per week three per week yeah so that's three per week george three per week and i, and I think you know if you take some of your trades and take them later in the day and hold them overnight you can you can get around a lot of that but they're pretty they're, they're pretty strict about that stuff and Alan just uh, entered a question. Uh, thank you, Dave and Rory, for the answer. My question is, day trade option, day in, day out, still need in the money? Still need what? I'm sorry? To be in the money. Yes. Okay. All, all the options I take will, I'll be, will be in the money. Um, you know, and I mean, then, there, are, there are things that you can do, the things called lotteries that you can take at the end of the week, but, but for all intents and purposes, every option call I take will be in the money. And Bree looks like she um, added a comment. She said that in a cash account, the PDT doesn't apply with options. Correct. That's correct. But you've got to wait for the, you got to wait for the trade to settle, which is usually an extra day. There you have it. Okay, great. Uh, that's all the questions, David. Oh, good. I'm glad it was glad that people had some questions. I, I, you know, this is this is a new room for me. It's going to be starting out new. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll certainly be, will be um, happy to take any kind of suggestions as the room moves along to to try to improve it for folks. Um, you know, I, I I'm, the, the room is is set up because I I I love this Compass software. I think this makes a huge difference for people who want to be traders and, and, and exper even experienced traders. And basically, I mean, I wanted to share this with uh, with uh, with with folks who, who are trading. I've shared it with a lot of the trading buddies that I know. Um, a lot of times when you say, you know, do you realize that the technical trading is not as effective now as it used to be a few years ago? You know, you get you get some side eyes, people looking at you funny. But when you when you when they drill down, they find out that it's true. Uh, so yeah, I thought I thought this was a, a great opportunity to uh, to get help people that are trying to learn how to trade do it more quickly and more effectively. Hey everyone, um, what I'm going to do is when I can share, I, I will show you the offer. Um, we're just going to switch it over a second and then I'll be able to do that. David, thank you so much um, uh, for that presentation. Um, it was really a breath of fresh air uh, in what goes on today in today's market and, uh, you know, in, 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 uh, in, in the marketplace today. And, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, this is the antithesis of of hype. Um, I think that you know the reason we wanted to work with David so badly was because I mean he is just really um, uh, supremely knowledgeable about, op about options, and also, uh, if anything, he sort of underplays his performance. Uh, and um, uh, you know, in in this in the in this environment, it, it is just really. Um, very refreshing to find a guy who knows so much, is so humble, and 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 you know doesn't tell you you're going to make seven thousand percent on a given on a given trade. So um, this is our offer. Now the reason we've limited it to a hundred traders is because you know we're, we're telling you that David just started. Um, you know the room's going to have its its little its little 
the nuances that we have to work out and we don't want to have we don't want to have more than that now we have 275 people in the webinar and um uh, i believe the 100 slots will go um and i'm and i'm we're, and we're not going to increase that number for a significant period of time until we really have this whole you know until we have everything really really um oiled and, and humming you know like a, like a finely tuned engine so the offer is 17 dollars for two weeks now it comes with a no questions asked money back guarantee if you don't like the room you don't like david style um anything about uh you know what he does you just send an email to, and, and you, you'll get this information to you when if you make the purchase to info at rightlinetrading.com we will instantaneously refund your money you give us a call rory's already been authorized to instantaneously refund your money we don't want you to stay in the room if you don't like it now just to go over you're going to get all of david's options calls he's going to call them live he's going to give you the the stock the strike the price um we're gonna we're going to work with david so that he can provide with provide you with formal educational seminars to try to, to really uh push your learning curve up higher and we're going to provide you with um with options video tutorials um, we have quite a few and we're also going to use that to try also to um to push up your uh your learning curve but really this is uniquely david style um, and this is really his methodology. So um, it's really just a matter of um, of learning out of the room. I think David will pro will provide you with tremendous educational support, and we will we will do formal webinars in which only those traders that are in the room will be privy to. We will we are not going to do a general send for those. So um, if you if you if you'd like to give it a test run for two weeks, you, you, you really don't have anything to lose. Um, we will turn your $17 around immediately um, if you don't like the way uh, the way things are. So um, I'm not gonna take any questions because um, I can't see the, the questions box on that, uh, on my um, on my go to webinar because um, it's still on David's side. Maybe Rory has it, but it's really straightforward. It's just a $17 two week no questions asked money back guarantee offer. Um, and like I said, that's our number below, 786-732-4656. Um, I personally think that you will find this trading room to be exceedingly unique, exceedingly successful. And I believe that David will get you to become an independent options trader. Uh, you know, he, he said, I like the way he said six months to a year. Because normally what most of these options guys tell you is you're gonna learn it overnight. And it's really simple. And the answer is it's not simple. Um, it, I mean, it takes, it takes a lot of work, but you can get there. So listen, I really thank all of you for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, um, re really, um, it, it, it's it, you know, between David and I, it's really, you know, I'm, not, I'm really in awe of, of his options ability because I've been trading options for 10 years and don't, I don't think I have a pinky's worth of information or knowledge uh, compared to him when it comes to trading um, options. So um, uh, I'm, 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 I am personally really impressed. So I, again, I thank David um, and um, I thank you all for your time and um, and you know, hope to see you in the in the trading room with David. And like I said, it's a no risk it's a no risk deal for you. So have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and I wish you all of the best. Uh, and um, I, you, you know, going into going to this holiday season, I, w I wish you all a really happy new year. Take care, everybody. Have a great evening. Bye bye.